God will direct you. The Bible says, be ye not unwise, but understanding. Understand what the will of the Lord is. If we will seek Him, God will show us how to be blessed. God will break off of us whatever the devil has put on us in Jesus' name. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.
depression. It washes away anxiety. The blood of Jesus cleanses you. I remember that day when I got a revelation of it. It felt like something just warm all over me. And I began to cry. And as I began to cry, I felt myself being free. I was on seven different medications for depression. And that's been over 25 years ago. And I'm going to tell you about the vein that flows. The blood, the river that flows from Emmanuel vein. It comes and it heals you. It comes and it washes all your sins away. bless you and praise you lord you're so wonderful and awesome you're so glorious and spectacular mighty is your name oh lord god today i want you to begin to lift up every member of your family today i want you to begin to call their name out before god and just begin to intercede and believe god to touch them today father in jesus mighty name today lord we lift up our families today and lord we cry out for you to move and manifest on their behalf lord i lift up kim and josh and matthew and megan lord i plead your blood over my family i pray you draw them close to you i pray you increase in them lord i pray your will purpose and plan shall be fulfilled in jesus mighty name now lord i plead your blood over every family represented here today i declare the blood of jesus covers your home i declare in jesus mighty name that there's love there's peace there's unity there's one accordness in jesus mighty name i declare every power of hell is bound in jesus mighty name i declare no weapon fashioned or formed against your family is going to prosper the enemy's tried to come into your family one way but i prophesy he's going to be smitten and defeated and flee before you seven ways for the glory of god i declare the hand of the lord is mighty upon you and your family in jesus name now stretch your hands out towards our city father in the mighty name of jesus we pray for our city we pray for the city of Louisville. And Lord, today I pray, God, that your spirit would move in a mighty, powerful, and glorious way. I pray it would move up and down every street. Lord, it would touch every family member in Jesus' name. Lord, we bind every power of hell that would come against the inhabitants of our city. We come against spirits of racism and prejudice, alcoholism, drug addiction, pornography, homosexuality. We come against 
against those spirits. We bind them in Jesus' name. Devil, loose your grip. Devil, loose your hold in Jesus' name. Lord, may there be an open heaven over our city. I pray your spirit would be poured out greatly and mightily. Lord, in multitudes saved, delivered, and set free. And Lord, we speak economic growth and development to our city. We bless our city. May it prosper greater than any city in this nation for the glory of God. We bless the great city of Louisville today in Jesus' mighty name. Now lift your hands up to the Lord. I want you to declare this with me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I declare your will, your plan, your purpose shall be fulfilled in my life. May all the days of my life, may I be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing in Jesus' mighty name. Now lay your hands on yourselves. Continue this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I declare divine health, divine wellness, and divine strength is resting upon me. I will not be sickly, weak, or feeble, but I declare divine health as my days are so shall my strength be and with long life you will satisfy me and show me your salvation i declare i'm blessed i'm not falling apart i'm not breaking down i'm not wearing out i'm being renewed like the eagles in Jesus' mighty name. Now I want you to begin to prophesy the finances to come into your house. Come on, begin to prophesy right now. Come on, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we prophesy abundance. We prophesy increase. We prophesy more than enough in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, today we declare we are blessed of the Lord, that we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath, and we will lend and we will not borrow. I I prophesy in Jesus' name that lack is broken off of us in Jesus' mighty name. We live under an open heaven, blessings being poured out. We cannot contain it in Jesus' name. Everything we touch, it prospers for the glory of God. We're going to always have all sufficiency in all things, and we're never going to lack for any good thing because the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to it is resting upon us. Do you believe that today? Come on, let's just thank God. He's a good God. Let's thank God. He's our provider. He's our support. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Turn around to the person next to you and say, you're blessed. Say, you're blessed of the Lord. You may be seated. Ushers, if you would come at this time and begin to distribute the communion elms. God bless you, Pastor Chad, as you would come. Well, hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. How many of you are glad for the presence of the Lord that's here today? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, you can do better than that. Somebody say praise the Lord. This is not just Mother's Day. This is church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that has been here all day in a tremendous way in the previous services as well. But here today, praise the Lord. I want to read to you a passage of Scripture that's been a blessing to me over the years. And the Lord has really been speaking to me here lately concerning the subject of peace. And it goes right in line a lot with what uh, these wonderful praise team singers have been leading us in this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you. In the book of John, chapter number 16, and verse number 33, this is Jesus speaking. How many know if, if he said it, it's important, amen? He said, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Some translations say that you'll have many trials and many sorrows. But listen what Jesus said. In the midst of tribulation, in the midst of trials and sorrows, he said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. How many of you are glad he's overcome the world? 
Praise God. Being a child of God does not guarantee an automatic pass on problems and troubles. The Word of God says that it rains on the just and the unjust alike. We're all uh, subject unto the affairs of life. But praise God, just as good as times of, of uh, blessings come and go, times of trials and hardships come and go. But I'm thankful today that we're not walking through it alone, that Jesus said even in the midst of times when you feel like crying, praise God for this wonderful testimony that we've already heard today how God took her off seven different medications for depression. Let me tell you what, God will give you seven different reasons to shout unto joy because of the deliverance he'll bring into your life. As many opportunities as we have for crying and sighing and defeat and struggling with sickness and disease and maladies and malfunctions, this we know. We have the Lord on our side. And Jesus said, be of good cheer. Look at your neighbor and laugh a little bit. I didn't say laugh at them. I said look at them and laugh. Praise the Lord. Stir up the joy. It's good medicine in your heart. Be of good cheer, Jesus said, for I have overcome the world. Did you hear that this morning? He's already overcome it. Every sickness, every disease, every trial, every defect and dysfunction, every strife, every family division, every discord on the job, praise God. The work Jesus did on the cross cancels the curse of sin and death. And here we are today, the recipients of his peace and his joy. What wonderful peace, amen. I'm reminded of an old song that said, peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. Somebody say peace. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We'll wait just a moment. I see some still being served. And if you're in an area and you've not yet been served, just wave at an usher. Somebody will make sure that you've been served in the house of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, you had to go and play it. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above. Come on, sing it, you know it. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of love your bread up to the Lord and say, Jesus, thank you for your work. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for taking every trouble of life. Thank you, Lord, for the promise that I can be of good cheer, for you have overcome the world. And if you overcame the world, I can overcome the world. Thank you today. Amen. Let's eat of that bread together and drink of the cup. Somebody shout, I'm an overcomer. Give the Lord a good hand. should be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. deliver a career but for you it's always been about a calling discover your path to successful ministry and fulfill your call at evangel christian college we offer a wide range of classes for ministry-minded individuals just like you with night and weekend classes available and financial aid for those who qualify evangel christian college is your perfect opportunity to grow you know your call now make the call that'll help you reach your goals evangel christian college realize your call He's the one that does the clothing. He goes, thank God we've got a pastor who prays the Lord. Because I'm an overachiever, I begin to run with the Father. gave the war of God. And be a man of God 
and they would just, oh, I just want you set free. Christ from the dead lives no, in. No, this preacher told you the truth. Suggest align yourself with CGIA, and let's go forth and take our communities for Christ. I want everyone to say with me out loud, this is the Word of God. This is God's plan for my life. It's a light into my pathway. It's a lamp into my feet. Today I shall hear the Word of the Lord. And faith shall rise within me. So I can believe God. And nothing will be impossible in Jesus' name. As you remain standing, please turn with me to the book of John. John chapter 2. And I want to begin reading in verse 1, John 2, 1. I was talking with a fellow, and his uh, dad was Frank Broyles, who was the coach at the University of Arkansas. They named the stadium after him and his father founded the fellowship of christian athletes along with tom landry so i asked him how he got saved and he said well you know i i wasn't a christian even though my dad was a christian and i was raised in church and i met this lady and she called me and she said you know there's a, a study on the book of john so i began to go to this study and study the book of john and he said after about three weeks i discovered I don't think I'm saved. He said, I, I, I knew about God. I went to church, but I didn't know Jesus. And this is one of the great books to begin reading when a person first gets born again. This is the first miracle that Jesus performed. It's found here in chapter 2. And it says, On the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto them, They have no wine. And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. But his mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone. And after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece, Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water, that it was made wine, and knew not thence it was come, but the servants which drew the water knew. And the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worst. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Father, anoint your word with great power in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. And you may be seated. God bless you. I was preaching on the radio, and there was a man listening to my sermon. And that uh, particular day, I was preaching on the home and how husbands ought to spend a lot of money on their wives. Well, he got under conviction, and so that night he came home, and he had flowers in one hand, and he had uh, candy in the other. And when his wife saw him, she burst into tears. She said, John, this has been a terrible day said, the kids have been awful. said, I've been sick at my stomach. The plumbing broke in the kitchen, and now you come home drunk. And, uh, <laughs> but when we look at mothers, we need to understand that this is a gift from God. Can I hear an amen? amen. There was a poem that says, M is for the million things mother gave me. O is for old because she's growing old. T is for the tears she cried to save me. H is for the heart as pure as gold. E is for the eyes so filled with love. And R uh, is for right, and right shall always be. You put it all together, and it spells mother, and that means all the world to me. 
But this is one of the great stories in the Bible. It's the first miracle that Jesus performed, and Mama was right in the midst of that miracle. One time I asked a friend of mine who was a Greek Orthodox, I said, why do you pray to Mary? And he came to this particular story. He says, well, uh, Mama was able to get Jesus to do things that the other people couldn't do. And sometimes I just ask Mama to get on to Jesus and have him do it for me. But aren't you glad we can pray directly to Jesus? Can I hear an amen? But then in the days when they had weddings during the time of Christ, it wasn't just a one-hour event, but it was something that took place many times for a week. It says on the third day of the feast or on the third day of this wedding, so a wedding would go all week long. Usually when it took place, it happened outside of the home of the groom. But now the bride's uh, father, he takes this marriage party and they go through the city. They take torches, they celebrate. People come and congratulate. And it's up to the bride's parents to provide the food and the wine. The Bible says they ran out of wine. Well, Mary's very concerned, and many think that maybe this was even one of her relatives that was getting married. We don't know. But she came to Jesus. And that is the place to come to when you need a miracle in your life. Can I hear an amen? Today I want to share with some of the attributes that God put in Mary, the mother of Jesus. These are attributes that God, I believe, places within a woman to make her what we call a mom. First of all is an attitude, an attitude of graciousness, an attitude to believe for miracles to take place. You know, a good attitude is better than a college education. You can have someone who graduates from Harvard University, but if they've got a bad attitude, they're negative. They don't have anything good to say. That's a person I don't even want around me. I want someone who's positive, someone who will stand in uh, there in the midst of trouble and will be able to uh, help you and encourage you in very difficult times. Can I hear an amen? amen? We know Mary was this type of woman. She had a great attitude. Uh, she uh, went through a lot of shame. And she went through a lot of difficult times and embarrassment when God called her. She probably was 13 or 14 years of age. And the angel of the Lord came to her and she became pregnant. In those days, uh, people were uh, accused her of everything that you can imagine. But her attitude was an attitude that was positive, an attitude that was set for success. There's a great scripture in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, and it says, A wise woman builds her house, but a foolish one pulls it down with her hands. A wise mother will build her house. The fact is, the Bible puts so much emphasis on a woman and what a woman has power to do. A woman can take a bad husband and turn him around where he does great things, and a bad woman can take a, a good man and make him a failure. In the Bible, there's a story of Korah. Korah lived during the times of Moses, and he had a revolt. He led a rebellion. Now, this isn't in the Bible, what I'm going to share with you, but it is in Jewish history. They said Korah's wife was was jealous. Korah's wife was full of envy. And she kept talking to Korah. Korah, you could be the head of Israel, not Moses. Look at what Moses is doing. Look, look what he says. Well, you're a better speaker than he is. And she constantly, she encouraged him to rise up in a revolt against Moses. And it was literally this woman, his wife, who caused a good man to uh, sin against God. On the other hand, there was another man. His name was Ben-Kura. Ben-Kura uh, was 
convinced by Korah to join this rebellion. And when he told his wife, his wife said to him, that is the wrong decision. There's nothing good that can happen to us because you're part of that re re revolt. The fact is you're friends with Korah, so if he becomes the leader and this revolt is successful, he'll promote you anyway. But if he's not successful, then Moses will have you executed and our old family will be in shame. And so ben Kura says, well, I've already given my commitment and I don't know how to get out of this. She said, well, I'll help you get out of it. And so she drugged him. She drugged him and he was totally out. And when they came to get him for the revolt, she said, there's great sickness in our house and they were afraid to even enter into the tent where he lived. And so it was Korah's wife that brought destruction to her home, but it was ben Korah's wife that helped save her home. And it all begins with a good attitude. There was mama mouse and baby mouse, and they were walking across a field, and a cat attacked them. So mama mouse turned to baby mouse and said, bark, bark loud. And so baby mouse began to bark, and the cat thought it was a dog and ran off. Then mama mouse turned and said, see, this is why you have to learn a foreign language. <laughs> when you talk about Mary, not only did she have a great attitude, but this was a lady who was very strong. She was a woman who was strong on the inside. A lot of times people think that when uh, a woman cannot be a strong woman and be successful, they have to submit and they have to submit to their husband. Well, what does submission mean anyway? It doesn't mean that you're a milk toast woman that just goes along with everything your husband wants because many times a man can make terrible, terrible decisions that can destroy a family. But what submission means is not that a woman doesn't have an opinion and not that a woman is not right but when it comes finally down to the nitty gritty, that woman will give her strength to her husband. There's many times that a husband submits to his wife. And there are times that a wife, she submits to her husband. But they don't, if, if a woman is a strong woman and a man is a strong dominant man, they can kill one another. They can fight and literally destroy that marriage. And if a man is strong and the woman is fighting against him, she reduces his strength where he only has half the strength. But if a woman will give her strength to a man, what he could not do, he's able to accomplish because now he has the strength of both himself and his partner. Can I hear an amen? amen. It's been uh, my great uh, privilege in my life to have strong women in my life. My mother was a very strong woman. And my dad, he had a lot of drive and a lot of vision. But a lot of people didn't realize it was my mother and her strength that steadied the ship. Sometimes a guy with a lot of drive can get discouraged. He can feel like giving up. But my mother says, no, we're going on. God's going to help us. We're going through this, and through her strength, giving it to my father, my dad was able to accomplish many things that he never would have accomplished without her. I married an Irish woman. Hallelujah for the Irish. <laughs> Praise God. But Margaret has given me her strength. And there's been a lot of times she's been right and I've been wrong. But Mary was a woman of great strength. She was a, a woman who faced challenges in life. Along the way, Joseph died. And so now she had to uh, work with her children. Her son Jesus would be crucified. He would die. And so she was a woman of great strength. My, there was a, a fellow, I read his story, he told how his mother died. It was he and his brother and his dad. 
His dad uh, was, uh, it was very difficult for him to hold a job. They lived uh, in great poverty. He didn't think he'd ever get out of, of high school. And his dad married a, a woman who had three children. He said that was the greatest thing that ever happened in his life because this woman believed in me. She would say to me, no, you're going to not only graduate from high school, you're going to college. And not only did he say, I went to college, but all the kids went to college. The fact is, my father went back to college and became a dentist. He went to the University of Louisville Dental School. His, uh, another one of the brothers, the stepbrothers, he also graduated from the Louisville Dental School. And uh, this fellow got a scholarship to go to the University of Virginia, where he became, first he worked in the newspaper business, then he became an author. But the strength of a mother can turn everything around. My grandfather was murdered. He was a, was a law officer. This is why I have a heart really towards our, our servicemen and those in the law enforcement, for, enforcement business. That's a very dangerous type of work, and we need to honor and respect our law enforcement uh, groups. Can I hear an amen? amen? But he was murdered. He was shot in the back. And my grandmother was pregnant at the time with twins. Now, one of those died, and they lost the farm because they couldn't pay the tax bill. And they moved to Wichita, Kansas. And there they lived uh, there at first with her sisters. And uh, then they were able to get their own place. My grandmother, who had people who worked for her, had a cook that cooked for her, had a housekeeper, now scrubbed floors. And then she got a job working at a hospital, working in the kitchen. But uh, because of her strength, she kept the family together and the family endured. And so Mary was a woman who had great strength in difficult times. The third thing about this lady was she was a, a lady who learned how to make it in finances. Now, when you study about wealth, there's a book that was published a number of years ago. I bought 30 copies, and I gave it to uh, different people. I gave it to pastors. I made all my children read this book. And uh, it, it's, it, it was, uh, I forgot the name of the book now. Hallelujah. <laughs> what was it called? The Millionaire, uh, the Millionaire Next Door. How many have ever read that book? Well, it's, it's a great book. And a part of that book is about a millionaire's wife. And it's an amazing thing, uh, the role that a woman plays in a man and wealth. It's very interesting, the majority of millionaires' wives, they use coupons when they go to the store. They're people who are very frugal. People uh, that are millionaires, most of them have only been married one time. Because a millionaire realizes if he gets a divorce, he's not going to be a millionaire anymore. <laughs> but Mary, when they went to dedicate Jesus, they offered a, a turtle dove. In those days, if you were poor, you offered a turtle dove. If you had a money or a person of means, you offered a sheep or a goat meaning they were people that did not have very much, but they trusted in God. And many times when uh, people do not have means, they have to do what they have to do to make it. And a lot of times you have to move. You have to go where the work is. You look at Mary. In a time when people sometimes never left uh, a 20-mile radius from where they were born, she uh, moved to Bethlehem. From Bethlehem, she moved to Egypt. From Egypt, she moved back to Nazareth. From Nazareth, we know that in her latter days, she went to Ephesus, Turkey, and that's where she's buried today. I think about the international families that are here in this church. How many of those women, they have left their, their family, they left their mother, their sisters, their brothers, those that would help them rear children, 
And they've come to the United States, to a country where many times they don't know anyone. And I think how the strength of these precious people and these precious ladies, because it's more difficult for a woman to leave their family than a man. The Bible says that a man is to leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. But it doesn't say the wife is to leave her father and mother. And this is why 80% of the families live where the mother's or where the wife's family is. They live where their family is located. But Mary, she was able to do and trust God for their money. Can I hear an amen? amen. And during, uh, during difficult times, many times a mother has to make do. She has to believe God for the food literally they eat. My dad started churches. He started over 100 churches. So I've lived above the church, below the church, in front of the church, and in back of the church. And it sounds real exciting, but what that means is there's very little money, and you have to be able to preach to small crowds at times. But we ran out of food to eat, and had only to eat was oatmeal. We uh, ate oatmeal for breakfast, ate oatmeal for lunch, ate oatmeal for supper. My mother got where she could make oatmeal patties, and then she made oatmeal gravy to go on those oatmeal patties. And we ate oatmeal for seven days. At the end of that time, we prayed, Lord, at least give us another brand of oatmeal. <laughs> but we learned to do what you had to do. And mother was right in there to make it all work. Let me tell you the fourth thing, and I want to close with this. The thing about Mary was she really trusted God. Can you imagine a, a young lady coming up in a home and her, her uh, parents, her parents were, were godly people. They were, out of a, they were priests. It was by, like being raised in a preacher's home. And you think about her grandparents. They had one grandson who was Jesus Christ and had another grandson who was uh, John the Baptist. That's uh, two pretty good grandkids preaching the gospel. Can I hear an amen? Amen. But she was raised to really believe God. And when she was about 12 or 13 years of age, an angel came to her and told her that she was greatly favored by God and that God was going to allow her to have a baby. And this baby would be mighty. He would be the son of God. And she said to this angel, angel, well, how can this be? I've never had sex. I've never kissed a guy. I've never held, have held hands with another fella. How can this be? And the angel said, For the Holy Spirit shall hover over you, and within you shall be placed the seed of the Messiah. And she said, With God, nothing shall be impossible. She was a woman who learned to trust the Lord. And then not only that, she wanted to be around where God was moving. In those days, there was no requirement for a woman to go to Jerusalem. There was a requirement for a man to make a pilgrimage to uh, Jerusalem, but not for the woman. Yet, during that 190-mile round trip, she went again and again and again. When uh, Jesus was 12 years of age, she went on that trip. And then as they uh, left, she thought Jesus was with someone else and they couldn't find him that night. And they went back to Jerusalem and there he was ministering in the temple. And when uh, she asked him, where have you been? He said, I have been about my father's business. And the Bible she says she meditated upon this. Or in other words, God spoke to her and God says, this truly is the, my son, the son of God. And so she was a woman of great spiritual empowerment. There's an old Spanish proverb that says an ounce of mother is worth a pound of clergy. And I believe that is true too, don't you? G. Campbell Morgan had four sons. G. Campbell Morgan was one of the great preachers in uh, the history of Christianity. 
lived in England and wrote many commentaries. Well, they asked the sons who was the best preacher. And they all agreed, Mama is the best preacher. Billy Graham had a lady write to him and says, Brother Graham, I, I've gotten saved. And I feel like God's called me to be a preacher. I've got 12 children, but I feel like God wants me to preach. So Billy Graham wrote back, and he says, Well, praise God. God's already given you a congregation. You <laughs> preach there. Today I want to pray for mothers. The first uh, group of mothers I want to pray for are those who've lost your mother in the last 12 months. Maybe you've come here today, and this is a difficult time for you. But if you've lost a mother in the last 12 months, I want you to stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God will bring a real healing in your life. Stretch your hands out towards these that are standing. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're never ready to give up a mother. And Lord, during this time, it's, it's very difficult for many people. And I pray, God, that you would bring a healing to each of these ladies. Bring a real healing for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. I want all the ladies to stand. I want you to stand whether you're a mother or not. I want you to stand. I want you to come down here to the front. I want you to gather in just as close as you can because I want to pray for you for three things to take place. I want you to gather in just as close, get as close as you can to the altar and around the front. The first area I want to pray for you is that God will release to you the gifts of healing, and the working of miracles. I thank God for all of the hospitals and all the wonderful doctors, but did you know there are more people that get healed through prayer than any other type of ministry? How many know that's true? Gather in just a little closer, if you will. That way there will be plenty of room. And when your children and family come to you, I want you to believe God for miracles to happen in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hold your hand up high. Father, I loose the gifts of healing and the working of miracles in the name of Jesus. I loose the gifts of healing, and as they speak, may faith begin to flow out of their mouth. And may faith flow into the ears of their children and to their family. Father, may there be an anointing where there's no cancer. No diabetes, no heart disease, no generational curses that would flow into their family. I loose authority in the name of Jesus to bind every demon of disease for the glory of the Lord in Jesus' name. Secondly, I pray an anointing upon you to be a soul winner. And may all of your family be saved in the name of Jesus. May not one member of your family go to hell. May not one son. May not one daughter. May your husband get born again. In Jesus' name, I declare you to have an anointing to win people to Christ. May every neighbor on your street be saved in Jesus' name. Father, I lose power to cast out devils. In Jesus' name, upon every mother here. And thirdly, I release the presence of angels to visit your house. May there be an anointing of the, uh, of, of the gift of discernment of spirits. And may God reveal himself. May angels visit you and warn you of attacks that would be upon your family and upon your children. May God speak to you by the revelation of the Holy Ghost. And may there be nothing that's impossible for you and your family in Jesus' name. May your children rise up and be mighty upon this earth. May they accomplish things you've never been able to accomplish. May they go to places you've never been able to go. And may they do things you've never been able to do. But may you cover them with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Now I want you to join hands with people on either side of you. I want the congregation to reach over and join hands with those around you and I want everybody to pray this prayer with me say Lord Jesus next to loving you I love the people of God and I declare today that the blood of Jesus is cleansing me from every sin 
I forgive those who've done me wrong. I'll not be prejudiced. I'll not be a racist. I'll not have unforgiveness in my life or in my family. God's healing our family. I bless those on either side of me. May this be the best day you've had all year. May there be love and peace in your home. May there be happiness and strength that would flow from one another for the glory of God. Amen. How many meant that prayer? Come on, give the Lord a praise clap if you meant that prayer. Hallelujah. Before we go today, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together. And uh, this week I went to pray for a man in our church. He, he attends our church every time the doors open. And he got saved. He's a painter. And he calls himself the Holy Roller because he, he rose. But he had a stroke. And uh, they were going to unplug him. So I went up to the hospital. And uh, when I did, his, he, he was alert. His eyes were moving. Uh, he didn't seem to respond to what I was saying until I said, well, I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer. So I reached over and touched him, and as I began to pray the Lord's Prayer, he closed his eyes. And then when I said amen, he opened his eyes again. So I felt like he responded. There was a lady who had had a stroke. She couldn't open her eyes. She couldn't talk. All she could do was lay there totally paralyzed and they thought that they should unplug her, cut off the feeding tubes, and she didn't know what to do. She didn't know how to communicate. She didn't know what to say. She couldn't say anything. So she said, I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer 10,000 times. So she prayed it 100 times. She prayed it 1,000 times. She prayed it 3,000 times. And when she got to the 10,000th time of praying the Lord's Prayer, suddenly her eyes opened. And she could talk. And uh, God totally healed her in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I want us to pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's give the Lord another great big praise clap. Hallelujah. God will direct you. The Bible says, be ye not unwise, but understanding. Understand what the will of the Lord is. If we will seek Him, God will show us how to be blessed. God will break off of us whatever the devil has put on us in Jesus' name. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.